Thanks for listening to Bloom TV's podcast, where we interview and get the inside scoop on world-leading experts in the flower industry. I'm your host, Devin Kearns. Learn more about all of our experts at bloomtvnetwork.com. Let's get started with today's special guest. Welcome back to Bloom TV's podcast. I'm Devin Kearns, and we're here with Renee Tucci, who is an author in the floral world. She's a self-proclaimed flower nerd from Philadelphia, an international educator and presenter. And as an author, she shares her floral expertise in her book, Framing Floral Techniques. She teaches about the fundamentals and principles of floral design, and Renee and her husband are dog fanatics. They've got three small dogs at home. Renee, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to, uh, to learn all about this passion you have for the floral world. As I was reading through some of your bios and everything else, it, it goes deep and you've got a lot of experience. So thank you for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure, really. I'm so thankful to, to be here with you today, Devin. Yeah, so good. So tell us where, I mean, to, to find the time to author a book, to, to decide to travel internationally and speak on something uh, specific like flowers and to dedicate your life to that something from back in your past must drive this. So tell us what is it that really stirred up and inspired this passion for you to be full-time headfirst into this world of flowers? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I, my sort of why story or how I got here is a long and winding road. Um, if I if I look all the way back, and I've sort of been doing this a little more recently, I hadn't I hadn't really done it up until the last few months, but trying to figure out really what piqued the interest so much. And I mean, really, since childhood, I've just been crafty. I just love to create things, um, you know, the friendship bracelets and all the little things that I used to make as a young girl. Um, that that really drove me and my creative side. Uh, Many years later, as a teenager, I actually applied to get a job at a local flower shop just to work there and after school, and they didn't actually hire me. Um, but I, I, I kind of, you know, went on to work elsewhere and didn't really think much of it. And then uh, years later, I was uh, working at a grocery store and they needed help in the floral department. And so I was plugging in there during high school. And that took me right up until when I had to figure out what I was going to do for college. And I, I realized that I was really digging the flowers. Um, so I, I decided to go head first. And I, I have a, a Bachelor of Science in Ornamental Horticulture, uh, which is sort of the, the science of flowers. Um, and then I have an emphasis on that degree in floriculture, which took me through some design classes. And uh, I really just pursued from college onward, I pursued working at um, different flower shops. I worked at uh, three flower shops, each one throughout my career, taking me to um, sort of a next level place um, where I, you know, the first shop, I really honed my skills as an event specialist. And the second shop I worked at, um, I, I became um, a manager and I learned some real leadership skills. And that's where I began my teaching. And then the third shop that I worked at, combine both of those two where I both managed a very busy shop and I handled all of the event design um, out of their Philadelphia and Florida locations. So I did quite a bit of traveling for them as well. Um, so it just it just kind of kept growing and growing and growing. Um, and I, I if I really stop and think about it, I think it goes back to those friendship bracelets from when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the crafty side of you drove it all, huh? That's right. That's right. I just love getting my hands on something and taking a raw material and turning into something that makes someone smile. I mean, who doesn't love that? It's satisfaction. It's the highest satisfaction. Well, and it feels, it feels um, natural, right? So nature does this with flowers. It's taking soil and nutrients and sun and all these other things and bringing out this beauty. And so it feels like you've always been pretty attuned to nature itself and driven by that. So it feels pretty natural for you to 
want to pull bits and pieces together and turn it into something that's shareable and that brings that that light into somebody's life. For sure. I don't know any designer that, you know, it, we get asked all the time, what is your biggest influence or, or where do you look for inspiration? I don't know any designer that won't say nature. I mean, that's mm -hmm. where we look. That's the number one spot. You know, Pinterest might be second, um, but nature is <laughs> always first. <laughs> she, she doesn't know how to stop inspiring um, with, with her sunsets and her mountain views and her island scapes. Um, you just, you just, you gotta like take it all in and, and you can't help but be inspired by it. Yeah, that's for sure. So what, I want to go back a little bit, right? So there's this creator in you as a kid and along the way, something was pushing you towards the floral industry. Was it a curiosity or was it just this knowing? What, what do you think was actually pulling you into those stores? I, I just really think it was the idea that I could create um, as an adult. <laughs> I could cr continue to create, I could grow a skill and I could use it to change people's lives yeah. because I, I really think that's what we do. I mean, from a, a bride on her wedding day to, um, you know, someone who's grieving their spouse mm -hmm. um, or even just a simple birthday uh, gift, you can really change someone's day, their week, their year uh, mm -hmm. with your design. And I think it was that idea um, that really kind of pushed me. Um, and the thought that I, I could just get my hands into something every day. I think I'm, I'm definitely more of a creative, uh, get my hands into it kind of person mm -hmm. than um, sitting at a desk. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, it's interesting because you're bringing up the gift factor of this, which we think about flowers, um, at least the vast majority of the population thinks about flowers as these gifts, right? But what we're seeing, and as you probably have realized, there's an uptick in the, the bringing the floral element into my life for me and actually going out and and bringing nature in as a method of mental health, as a method of, of balance and restoration and grounding in my environment. And it's been new for me personally. I mean, since uh, um, co-founding Bloom with Monica, the, the draw I've had to bring nature in, bring flowers in, never in my life but I, I barely bought flowers for girlfriends because i'm like it dies i didn't get it and and now i'm sur literally surrounded by plants in my place right now and what are you seeing as this expert who really has this this this, this human element to your passion which is that giving that gift and and uh bringing light if if it's a funeral or loss or grieving or if it's joy and celebration for other that's powerful but when it comes to the individual um reasons to bring these na natural elements in these floral elements into our lives what what do you see there well there again it's it's just nature it's being one with nature so when we're when we start bringing things into our home we start experiencing that draw that we never knew we had you know because we've been so conditioned to just live in these sterile environments mm -hmm. uh, but once you start to surround yourself with those botanical materials um, although they may take sort of a backseat role to your everyday life once they go missing again you notice it mm -hmm. uh, so i'm so glad to hear that you are beefing up on your plant um, addiction because that is key to mental health of course we saw the numbers on all of this skyrocket during COVID yep. when folks couldn't couldn't go anywhere, um, couldn't go shopping, couldn't do anything. They started bringing nature inside, um, buying plants for themselves, buying flowers for themselves, even if it's just a few leaves in a vase, which are super long lasting. Um, all of that can do go a long way to um, making your home a more natural and um, pleasing environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I agree with you. I have plants everywhere, um, a, sort of a, a byproduct of being a plant in my house is that they also get 
cut from to make designs with. So that's sort of a bonus because they keep living and then I can kind of harvest from them as well. Uh, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't have a house without plants and flowers, even if it's dried flowers, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, that are everlasting. It just adds so much nature to where we live. It really does. Couldn't agree more. So, so now, all right, on this journey with you, you're, you're this creative force. You love creating, you love watching it light up people's lives. You dove head first into the floral world. Tell us the journey that led to um, uh, partnering with Schiffer, writing a book and authoring a book, which is never an easy task. Um, tell us what led to that and what, what, inspired the book in the first place? Well, uh, that's an easy answer because, um, well, someone, a good friend of mine uh, told me in the summer of 2019 that I should write a book. And um, prior to that, I had never considered it. And at that time, I did not have the time to, to buckle down and think about a book. So that seed just kind of got planted in the back of my mind. I didn't do anything with it. I just set it there. Um, and then March of 2020 happened and my calendar completely cleared. I'm a full-time freelancer and educator. So with no in-person classes on the books, with no weddings on the books, with really nothing on my schedule, I, um, and, and I'm not good at sitting still and doing nothing. So I, I revisited that seed and I just decided it, it might be now or never. So really and truly, the only reason that I buckled down and wrote this book is because we were on lockdown, um, because I was then finally able to really focus on it and make it a priority. Uh, so I called my friends, the wonderful people at Schiffer. And to be honest, I didn't know actually what I wanted to write about. I just knew that I really enjoyed writing. Uh, People seem to like my writing. Of course, it was going to be around flowers somehow. Mm -hmm. um, but I just told them I want to write a book, but I don't know what I want to write it about. And I thought that they might laugh me off the phone. But apparently, this is not uncommon. So um, <laughs> they, they very kindly talked me through the different options. And pretty quickly, we just we distilled down the fact that education is my focus, and therefore education should be the focus of my book. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we we settled on um, the you know sort of the niche of it or the topic of it. And um, really, I, I do a lot of teaching, and it's really for uh, basic or new designers up to intermediate. That's mm -hmm. sort of my sweet spot. And that's what this book really speaks to is, is that crowd who's looking to learn the new techni techniques, um, refine their skills and, and elevate, start to elevate their designs. What does new mean? Meaning uh, a Devon who's never done this before or new, like I actually <clears throat> am in the industry, but I'm new to the industry and I've already been doing it for a little while. Both. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it really, I, I wrote it to speak to um, everyone, you know, those that have a little bit of experience and those that have none. Um, and so for those of the Devons of the world that have no <laughs> experience, um, there is an additional element in the book just for you. Um, it, throughout the book, there are some uh, more elementary things like, you know, how to use floral tape, um, how to put chicken wire over a piece of foam, things like that, that, yeah. you know, sort of those that have a little bit of experience know how to do, um, but the early beginners don't. So yeah. throughout the book, you'll see a QR code on the pages and you can scan that QR code and it'll take you to a special playlist on my YouTube channel that walks you how, how to, through how to do those very elementary things. So for the more advanced designers, I didn't have to add a bunch of bulk to the book that they might not be um, wanting to read because they already know that. But for the beginners, you can not only learn it, but you can learn it through video. So, uh, which is sometimes even better than a book. Uh, so I, I'm really excited about that part of the book and it's, it's really engaged a lot of folks. I love that. I love the, you know, we, we, um, have partnered with what women create magazine and using the QR code to bring what is print to life or bring what is print to a deeper or further down the rabbit hole. I love that that element's added in here because I think it's so crucial, right? I can have this beautifully aesthetically pleasing 
book that reaches the audience and is able to speak to two demo demographics. But to your point, um, you're not going to bore everybody with all the minutia, right? And even exactly. I think the the beginner would be bored with it if the book was too thick, too detailed. If I want to go down that rabbit hole, I can go down that rabbit hole. That's brilliant. Well, thank you. I was um, really excited about it. And, you know, it's a playlist that I have set up now so I can continue to, con can continue to add to it. Yeah. Um, and things can be revisited um, as much as you want. And you can engage with me there, you know, comment on the videos, ask questions, things like that. And of course, I would respond to that as well. Um, so it sort of opens up a whole new avenue uh, from the beautiful pages that Schiffer created mm -hmm. uh, to this virtual world. Yeah, so good. So neat. So now I'm curious, what are you up to today? So the book's written, we're out of COVID, you're back in the world, the, the world of, of gardening and flowers and everything is on this upward trajectory. What's next for you? Yeah, well, as I said, I'm a full time freelancer and educator. So um, I teach a lot, um, both on virtual platforms. And there's a school near my house that's an AIFD education partner program. And I teach there. So we're working with students, um, teaching them all the skills they need to go from beginner uh, and up. And those that matric matriculate through the program actually become a certified floral designer under the AIFD, American Institute of Floral Designers umbrella. Um, so that is really fulfilling and rewarding. I also find myself uh, doing presentations and speaking engagements to lots of garden clubs, which I just love. Um, the women that come to garden club presentations, they are my people. <laughs> <laughs> they are my fellow flower nerds. Um, they probably know more about gardening than I do, because even though I have an ornamental horticulture degree, I've done nothing with it. So, um, you know, I, I know about how to grow flowers, sort of, but I really know what to do with the flower once you cut it off the plant. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, you know, lean on them for gardening advice, and then I, I share with them how they can then turn those flowers into a design, and that, that's really um, wonderful and very re rewarding. Um, and then I'm a freelancer, so in my spare time, I, I work for several studios in the Philadelphia area, and in the spring and the fall, when it's wedding season, I am booked, you know, Wednesday through Saturday every week, getting events ready. Um, and that keeps me, you know, in touch with, with the trends and what's happening and different techniques and mechanics that might be coming on the scene. Um, and then I also help uh, with some shops at holiday time, which uh, gets me into the retail world briefly. Yeah. So, you know, Christmas, Valentine's Day, things like that, Mother's Day, you'll find me at a retail shop. Um, which again, just helps me stay in touch with the community. Right. Um, so I keep pretty busy. <laughs> that sounds busy and brave. Um, <laughs> I spent in my late teenage years about two weeks in retail and I was done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I and did, it was holiday I, season too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did, you know, it sounds like I was doing time. I did 19 years in retail and I loved it. I, I really loved it. I love that customer engagement. I, like I said, I honed my leadership skills in retail and my management skills and um, just learning how to work with clients to, to build their event decor. It, it was really a great, great time for me. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, it was just sort of these other things opportunities kept coming up and coming up and coming up. And I thought, you know what, I think it's time to make the jump. So I left retail, uh, but I still dip my toe back in every, every so often. Yeah. It sounds like it's a good balance. Yeah, for sure. And I should say my very first week at a retail job when I was a freshman in college was the week of Valentine's day. So it was a sink or swim situation. And apparently I swam cause I'm still doing it. <laughs> So well, I get what you're saying about working your first time in retail at a holiday time. It's intense. I love people. How would I put this? I love people in conditions where we can flourish. And it seems during holiday times, um, none of us, myself included, flourish that well. <laughs> so I kind of go the opposite direction. It sounds like you kind of thrive in it in this 
level of wanting to bring that light to people's lives. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there's a thrill, that. there's a thrill to the volume and, you know, hitting the marks and getting the work done and, yeah. and, um, and making people so many more people happy. Yeah. Uh, there's a thrill to that. That's incredible. I love that. So what's on the horizon? What are you looking forward to? What are you most excited to create from this point forward? Well, folks have been asking when my next book will come out. Mm. And to be frank, unless we go on lockdown again, I'm not, I'm not sure if I will get another one done. Although I'm thinking about it, considering it, um, trying to, you know, really uh, come up with an idea that I can really sink my teeth into. Yeah. Um, it's, it's brewing, it's brewing. Um, so I, I will continue to think about that. Other than that, I, I'm just going to continue down the same path that has been rewarding me so much with my teaching and my freelancing. Um, it's, it's really where I found my niche. It's mm. where I love to be. It puts me in front of many audiences and beside many other incredible designers that I learned, I learned so much from every day. Um, so I'm just going to continue to learn and share as much as I can. Mm. I love that. So if you were in front of an audience and this audience is super interested in, in connecting with nature, in creating, in um, playing around with this inner voice that's speaking to them, right? I feel like this is a big part of our world right now, particularly here in the US where they, they haven't quite crossed over to the doing aspect of it, but, but they're starting to hear that whisper. They're starting to hear the whisper to dig into the earth, dig into the flowers, dig into planting. What would be your message to them? Mm. Start small, mm. like anything else, you know, you want to take something new and small bites. So whether it's developing your garden further, start with a single patio pot. It doesn't have to be a big 12 by 12, you know, foot bed that you're creating. Um, and then perhaps you're cutting some of those blooms and you're starting to dabble in turning them into a design that you enjoy in your home. Um, again, start small. It doesn't have to be some grand urn that you're creating for an entryway. It can be a bedside table full of beautiful blossoms that you've grown yourself um, or a little mass market bouquet that you picked up while you were getting some bagels and orange juice on a Sunday morning. Just start small. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll become with it. I think folks are really afraid to play with flowers. They're afraid that they're going to, you know, hurt them or break them or do it wrong, or they, they can't get it to look like how it looks in the magazine. And it, you know, it's, this would fall, if, if I were in that place, I would have trouble listening to me as well, because, you know, we, we, dri we are driven by perfection and we want everything to just look right the first time every time and it, it just doesn't so yeah. you just have to remind yourself that the more you do it the more comfortable you'll become with it yeah. um and then of course you know you can always watch some educational videos or pick up a book um that might give you some tips and techniques on how to get that look you're you're looking for but like anything else start small one little small bite at a time you know as you're sharing that it's interesting and i'll just confirm what you're saying i think that's true for anything in life right if you're going to go create something and you're new to it doesn't matter if it's a business doesn't matter what you, you can get overwhelmed and then just paralyzed and then you don't go for what that voice is telling you to go do but the the story that's coming to me as i'm sitting here thinking about this because i just walked into their house yesterday is uh a, one of my favorite couples um you know, he is this rock star in, in business and in, in just abundance and all this other dynamics of his life, right? And she's this incredible human being, healing people and serving people. And what I've noticed with him, as an example, is it was less about the actual flowers or the actual gardening, but for him, it was his trans, uh, 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 
it was transferring his heart that he's now working on and opening up to that idea to photographs and pictures and artwork that he's bringing into his life, right? So, and it started with one frame that he then put up and he's never had pictures and frames around his house, right? And now he's, he had one and now they're everywhere. And in her world, she's like, well, I want to do something special for myself on a weekly basis. And I think I'm going to just buy myself some flowers, right? Flowers. I love having flowers. So I bought fresh flowers and they were already put together and they were in her house. And last night I walk in and in her backyard, she now has a garden. She Mm -hmm. now has this huge vase with this incredible display on their brand new table. And, and over here, she's got her uh, usual spot where she's always had her flowers over the last year. Right. And and this beautiful centerpiece there, but she put it together this time. It wasn't just something she bought and stuck in, she put it together. And then you walk out back and not only does she have this garden that she's growing, but she's got bees now, right? And I, uh-huh. and I think back to a year ago, it was like a frame for him and a, a bouquet for her that she was just committed to buying. And all of a sudden it just literally bloomed Mm -hmm. into their whole world and it's such a truth that if you're aiming at the bees and the garden and the huge displays and centerpieces it it will overwhelm you and you won't even know where to start it started with a picture frame and a bouquet (laughs) look at where they're at and it's really powerful absolutely and you know that sort of aligns with why i teach um i There's nothing that brings me more joy than seeing a room full of people walk in, they see the sample that we're going to be creating today, and they they immediately start getting frustrated and and sort of muttering under their breath, you know, mine's not going to look like that. I could never do that. And then we go through the class and they do it and their arrangement does look like mine and they are over the rainbow happy, um, so surprised with themselves. And, and just by them, they, they're putting themselves through that class. They've opened up this world to themselves. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's incredibly rewarding to see those folks leave the class and then sign up for more because they yeah. love it. You know, they were so happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I'm hopeful and I've heard that many of them did. They, they then took that small bite and they used it to do more in their lives. Yeah. It's so rewarding. Oh, so cool. Well, Thank you for um, your willingness and patience to work with the Devons of the world, <laughs> because I feel like so many become these experts and it's hard, it's hard to, you know, uh, another phase of this whole journey. And, and the only reason I know this is, is in the business world, you, you get to a level of mastery, but you almost have to start over to teach not only start over to teach you not you're learning from two different perspectives you're having to go back and remember something that was so simple and so fundamental and so basic but then you're having to go back and have to learn how to teach something that was so simple and so fundamental and so basic and that's not the easiest process it's all about how you break you have to break it down you have to remember okay you know if i were learning this now what's the methodical way that makes the most sense? And, mm-hmm. and I'm a very methodical teacher. Mm-hmm. I like to really break it down to the building blocks and then build it back up again. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's taken me years to get to this point where I feel really confident about the method that I use, uh, but I'm seeing the results and it's working and mm-hmm. folks are really learning from it. So um, you're right. You do. You really have to change or flip the script on how you think when you teach. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is an incredible journey. Um, once you've reached that ten, <coughs> I see it turns out I'm the one coughing instead of you. <laughs> once you reach that 10,000 hour mark to go back and literally start from maybe an even potentially more frustrating place um, than being a beginner because you're trying to teach beginners simultaneously is such a unique gift. And obviously you have, you have 
begun and are well into your journey of mastering that level of mastery. And so thank you for doing that because I think it's so important and it's, and it's not an easy journey. It's not easy to go back and really work with those beginners and, and be able to find that patience and that um, method of teaching. So uh, I personally am grateful. It makes me want to, to go get, get this book and I will definitely be having to, to, scan that QR code. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. And, and, you know, if, if folks out there do want to take a look at the book, I encourage you to visit the Schiffer Publishing um, website. There's not only my book is on there, but they have um, several floral design and craft books. Um, so you can really um, learn from my book and then be inspired by, by some other um, beautiful books that they have in their catalog. Um, and then if you happen to be local to the Philadelphia area, I, I do have quite a few classes coming up. So you can always check ReneeTucci.com to find out what's coming up for me in the, you know, for the rest of the year. I love it. Yeah, we'll have both of those links in there. And, and is that the only place they can find you? Oh, of course not. I'm on the socials. <laughs> you have to be on the socials. So I'm on Instagram at ReneeTucci, R-E-N-E-E-T-U-C-C-I. And um, same on Facebook, Renee Tucci. Uh, actually, I believe it's Renee Tucci AIFD on Facebook. Awesome. So good. Well, what a magical conversation. Again, thank you for joining us over here at uh, the Bloom TV podcast. And, and uh, maybe if Monica and I are able to, we might be able to convince you to come over and, and create some videos for us as well. Oh. Please, it would be my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. This is so fun. Thank you for being here. Okay. See ya. Bye. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower.